so used to seeing minor pinch on mid lane and mostly targeting the key junglers, but that could change. If you target a single roll, suddenly these players would have to dive in their fourth and fifth champion, right. and very few of them have had to do so, so far. Exactly. Uh, one of the obvious ones that's jumping out in everybody's mind, of course, in the mid lane, is in addition to Ryze and Syndra, the victor uh, that has not shown himself right here yet, but Cloud9 two more, and there you go. <laughs> you don't gamble against the victor. <laughs> Also, a matchup that Jensen was struggling with a little bit. Yeah. Lost uh, both Victor into Rise and Rise into Victor. Both champions off the table right here. The only real mid lane champion remaining that's been prominent is that Aurelian Soul. Right, Aurelian Soul. And considering these two mid laners, too, uh, to me, the Cassiopeia for Jensen also rises up now with the bands that are on the board. But now we're swapping over to top lane. That's been big for both QV and Impact, who have been extremely good top laners this tournament. Yeah, so we're looking at the likes of a Rumble being open right now, which is high for these players. Oh. Nidalee is oh. off the table. Elise is a primary pick here. Aurelian Soul is a pick we're looking at. So Olaf would be a surprise right here. Yeah, I mean, Olaf going to take it away from Meteos. Ambition was one of the junglers to pick that up. Uh, we'll see what they combo it with, because you definitely want some more speed. The Karma is available for them, as Sivir sure. is always an option, though very rarely used. And as I said, the Jin I think, uh, very high in priority, maybe even early pick here for Cloud9. Could easily be a Karma Rumble here in first rotation, too, you know, solidifying True. that early Rumble pick, always having pressure for impact in the top lane. Neither of these junglers really visit top all too often, so that could Definitely favored towards the priority on the Rumble. Seeing how many picks are actually contested between these teams really does it. It's a mind game of they're taking it away plus getting the champion that they want. Already happened with the Olaf. The picks and bans are basically shared by both teams as well. You could have seen those bans from either side. And we'll see them throughout the rest of this best of five. What will they go with? Will it just be kind of a sneaky pick? Not showing too much. It is going to be that Caitlyn lock-in. And they do grab the Rumble. As we mentioned, also along with the Jin, Caitlyn very strong with the extra range down there. We'll see if they combo that with one of those long range poking supports as well, yes. because we've seen the Zyra. Karma can also be flexed there. No hesitation. There's your extra speed for, <laughs> the, no more flexing. for the Olaf. Yeah, it's no more flexing. But you do get that guaranteed. Uh, you know, it really just enables Olaf, because Olaf does fall off in mid and late game pretty heavily. Yep. And the threat he needs comes from the teammates that you surround him with. I love this pick that Samsung did, though. Just instantly, Cloud9, what do you got? What are you thinking about? Yeah, right they have to be prepared. They must have ran a million pick and bass scenarios exactly. in their preparation. I think that's really good research by Samsung, because that was one of the things that we mentioned as well, jumping right to your front of your mind as you see the bands on the table, is the Cassiopeia for Jensen has been his go-to. He likes to be the backline, exactly. very high DPS uh, AP from the late game. But historically, Aurelian Soul into Cassio has seemingly been a decent matchup. It's the matchup that Faker has at the worst stats in of his career almost, I feel. He's gone down in regional qualifiers, even during Worlds, so... Yeah. Definitely something you could play. This actually... Ooh. The Oriana pick was the expected answer into Cassio in the start of the tournament, but because there was not as high of a priority as expected, we very rarely saw Oriana come out. But it's a super uh, doable matchup, and it's very easy to play for the Oriana. It's very hard to outplay if you're Cassiopeia. Yeah. Mostly because the ball zones versus the attack. Right. Really do like that matchup, especially since with when you pick a Aurelian Soul, there is a bit more pressure to be proactive early. And if if that's not your comfort zone, where Jensen has been a mid laner to dominate mid lane, he wants to play aggressively, push up in his lane, and try and harass under right. turret, uh, and may not be you know as accustomed to the high roaming style and trying to get kills elsewhere. Well, that Rexai may be the available early blue for Jensen to keep up with Crown's Definitely. pushing. We see the Jin and the core JJ Echo pick for Cuvee coming in. Super likely that we're going to see that early blue buff handoff. Right now, Smoothie is looking for a pick, and combined with Meteos, that's pretty much the engage for C9. So they need to draft at least a combination of two champions that can start fights or at least facilitate those engages because their mid games have been very slow. And that might be why they're still going for this Alistar despite having a range support against them. But that unit, that Caitlyn Alistar, is more than fine alone in the bot lane. Exactly. The Caitlyn Alistar is actually one of my favorite combos of ranged melee uh, bottom lane because you have the threat of comboing the Alistar all in with a trap. That just provides so much setup for a jungler. Uh, really a lot of pressure there. Definitely a lot of pressure and it allows the Caitlyn also to just use the range to kind of 1v2 the laning phase. Miners to stay from Alistar. Really good combination overall. Night is fight lane. Smoothie's got it locked in. Meteos could again. We've seen him in previous games come to that bottom lane, get the flashes blown, and at least gives Sneaky and Smoothie a way to get through the lane quite easily. 
Also, I really like the Rek'Sai passive pickup for Cloud9 uh, because they have actually struggled a bit with the vision, especially towards the mid and late stages of the game where they start to fall off. Rek'Sai is going to provide a lot of extra intel for them. We'll see what uh, they're able to do, though. Game number one, and everybody is getting amped up. Hard to believe we've already been through two weeks of games, and there's already more to, and there's already more to come here. The coaches say good luck one last time to the teams and each other as we're about to be on the rift. And I, I just want to say I love this venue. It's built for acoustics. We can really feel like when the fans are cheering despite a uh, lower number than we had in San Francisco. It is loud in here. I really love it when you can actually feel the audio. Oh yeah, it's heating up in here. We still have chills. Let us know who you are backing. Tweet at our LOE, LOL Esports. Good start. With the hashtag SSG win or the hashtag C9 win. We'll tally the vote in game as usual. The crowd is ready at home in the Chicago theater. Samsung Galaxy and Cloud9. Looking to keep their hopes alive here in Worlds 2016. We're about to be on the rift. Yeah. And despite what the signs in the crowd were saying, they're actually running it down bot lane right now. You'll see it once we zoom out. Get some frequent flyer miles here. The crowd is behind him. It is home turf, and the game has begun. We'll see how Samsung and Cloud9 go at it in our first quarterfinal best of five. Yeah, we saw a four-man run in the bot lane right there. Samsung moving together, trying to get in there for some vision. There's a reaction from C9 right after. Yeah, I think it's highly likely that the Samsung bottom lane will go to interrupt the Gromp, but Cloud9 have placed their defensive ward already as soon as Samsung walk over, up through the river, they'll see him coming. And this bottom lane should probably just have both of them start with outside camp. You really want to do that with the double range to try and abuse the ranged and melee as soon as you can. Top side start for both junglers, though, and Cloud9 do have vision hmm. on the Olaf. I wonder if we're going to see Ambition take advantage from the fact that Medius is so predictable in his pathing on that Rex. I starting top side and then handing off the blue. You know, very, uh, very well could do that on the Rex side, but also if you've set a pattern and people are expecting you to go very passive, Olaf is one of the jungle champions that you can actually attack in the jungle because he likes to get low for the quicker clear, and you can try and surprise him. You know, maybe get a summoner. Medius though usually going very, very safe in the early game, trying to get farm advantages yep. as opposed to uh, pressuring. And I want to delve a little bit into the mid lane uh, pickoff. Why Orianna is such a good pick into Cassiopeia? It's because Cassiopeia always stacks straight. It's a Q into E combo, walking up. Orianna doesn't really get punished too much from Miasma. Early on, there's good base damage, but once you hit like level three, four, five on Orianna, she just puts the ball forward and Cassia will get punished and sold every time she walks up to finish a trade. That will make it so she can't stack multiple E's on you, you can disengage. And then at level 6, there's always the looming threat of an Oriala ultimate. There it is. You talked about predicting uh, the slow route there. Cloud9, Medios is going to be able to get his blue, but what you deny is the blue handoff. Definitely so, but he does still have a super fast clear doing this path. And Ori as a champion is fine farming, uh, a little bit pushed in early. Not too much pressure as of just yet. As you said, Kobe Medios really not liking to counter jungle too much or get aggression, I should say. He actually counter jungles quite well in the early game. They're just about 16% of the enemy's jungle camps. Ambition's looking about six there before 15 minutes. So that could really hurt Ambition if he's moving slower on the jungle with that low health. Yeah, see, Medios actually really does like uh, to not only control Scuttle Crabs for the extra vision, mm -hmm. but steal away the single small camp every time uh, they get any sort of vision on the enemy jungle. Remember that they did see Olaf start on the top side. So this is very predictable, the route that Ambition has taken. And it is a very full clear, but shouldn't catch uh, Jensen uh, by surprise here, even though he's pushed fairly far up. I mean, he has subs. He knows he can survive a gank, so he's just going to try and probably ghost out here. Might have to flash. Ambition goes very early. That was, nice that was 
actually an amazing juke there by Jensen. He did not give Crown the passive movement speed on his Q. And this all ties together here. So good start from C9. They both walk into Weaver, both uh, their top laner and the jungle to put two wards down. And that actually allows them to play super aggressive in the top side like they were doing earlier with that river vision. Impact, despite actually only getting 3% jungle tension uh, before 15 minutes, is generally always pushing and has a massive CS lead. This guy playing, uh, plays like a monster despite playing on an island. Yeah, I think everybody really playing accordingly there. No, no big surprises. For Samsung, it actually didn't give up anything to go for that gank. No, nope. yes, Ambition did trade in Ghost, but his camps, he remember, he started on the top side, so he's just going back to that top side. Very efficient clear still. Didn't lose any time with that, and I uh, don't think that any team right, or either team right now, uh, really out to any big meaningful difference. No, we're looking at pretty much even CS across the board, except for in that top lane where Impact was relentlessly pushing from early on. Yep. It's a nice smite, here. He smited early. Yeah, that's a steal. Smited early for the extra poison uh, from the Gromp to help him kill it, but bottom lane pushing up. This is something that we kind of touched on in Champion Select. The importance, especially on blue side, of very strong, you know, double range bottom lanes. Yeah. So you can then go to invade and you get that vision stacking going. Yeah, but Sneaky got through the power shot of the early levels where the common folk is pretty obscene. He managed to go at even CS and right there you saw him punish that fourth shot as well. Really good combo E into Q, layered in between within the headshot proc from the E mark. Really well played. They're looking for ambition to break uh, the game open here for Samsung Galaxy. His impact is pushing quite heavy on the top lane. Definitely agree with your bottom lane point there because you do have to keep in mind uh, that all-in potential that we talked about from the Alistar and Caitlyn, especially in the early stages where there there's very low vision at the moment and the first support recalls are really where the dangerous moments come, where you're trying to get that first line and, you know, traps can be set up. I like what C9 is doing here. Much more early grouping. Both jungler and top lane grouped a little bit earlier. Right now, support roams mid off to the base. Complete surprise. He's likely going to be at least one summoner blown here when Smoothie combos. And the question has been, is the communication there between Smoothie and Meteos? For sure it was on that one. Crown moves fast. Oh, he gets smoothie. the stick though. Petrifying gaze. Smoothie gets taken down. Flash and Knight is down. They're on the crown now, but it doesn't even look like they'll get anything out of it. What a massive mistake there from Smoothie. Crown gets the 1v3 first blood. Complete outplay. You got to expect that he's going to flash the combo. This is a team error. There's two ways you make that play. Either you flash combo at the same time as you know Direction is going to go for the play. If Medios tells them, okay, we'll right I will go for the knockup. Smoothie can right here go for flash combo. And he will layer it in. The problem is, if he goes that slow and that late, it's a reactive combo, and he's too slow. Even if he does it later on, Crown will still get the R off. So basically, this is a communication mistake between Smoothie and Medios. We don't know who made the wrong call or whether it was just instinctive, but this is a major flaw for C9, even in the late game. We saw it in week two as well. They need the synergy on the engagement, and they're always one or two seconds off, and it can mean much, much bigger differences between gains or losses. There were moments in the group stage where we did see a little bit of a disconnect between the two members of the crowd, uh, Cloud9 frontline. And here we have a very immediate uh, punish from Samsung as they go in to take the first Drake. And it is that Ocean Drake to help out with the regeneration early on. Very important. Meteos, though, does get a small tidbit back for Cloud9 here, uh, trying to deny Blue Buff from the crowd. Still haven't seen any action from the top lane yet, and that also is to the team. It is impact up by 19 CS at this point, so doing quite well. Looks like you could hit that penetration item mark quite quickly, and maybe Cloud9 will be able to work off of that. For now, though, it seems like that laning phase will stay, and that's only going to play in Galaxy's favor. Yeah, but we are looking at a summoner less Cassiopeia in the mid lane versus Oriana Rek'Sai. Definitely gankable, especially if you know that Jensen has flash. You now, Sneaky getting low here. Remember this curtain call available. Oof. Or JJ 1v2. You were them. saying? <laughs> curtain has been called. It's also not a level six for Smoothie. Just another attack. Is it the Q? Oh! oh, the deadly flourish almost taking him down, but they captivate the audience and stay alive. Ooh. Touch and go there, and they do get the heal out of Sneaky. So Summoner Spell Burn, a lot of pressure on bottom lane right now. Plus, look at the vision Sam uh, Samsung are placing right now. It's all around the Drake, around this bottom half of the map. This becomes very dangerous territory for Meteos as well now to try and protect his jungle. Yeah, and you can see it in the confidence of Ruler as well, playing very confidently upwards, always going for that poke. Jensen is forced to move in the top left side of this lane because if you look at the bottom right, there's two pink wards yep. basically robbing the river of any vision. 
now we're going to see uh, Smoothie go back to try and combat the vision that has gone in Samsung's favor. Remember, he still does not have Flash, so this is dangerous for him on the Alistar. Does see that one expire, so not going to go into the ward to or into the river to try and clear out the pink wards. And Samsung actually will retain control of the bottom half. Yeah, and this 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 early vision control has actually done something countering Meteor's natural style. Meteor's is not a heavy ganker. Pretty low jungle proximity with all his lanes combined. Absolutely. But he usually goes for the, for the little invade here and there, stealing a buff. He did it earlier with the boo buff as a reactionary play. But other than that, because the river is kept on lockdown, he's having a hard time getting into Ambition's jungle. See yeah. Ambition head back to his. All that ward vision on the bottom side lets them know where Smoothie is. No more engages on Crown. He can play a little more aggressive. The CS has still been in Cloud9's favor and get their item points possibly before Samsung, but hopefully not losing to any more of these early game ganks. It is Samsung that has the shortest time coming out of those group stages, and right now they are looking like they can put a pretty powerful fist on the early game here. Yeah, and Crown must be happy with the way that early game is going. Well, this is a player that ramps up past 15 minutes. The biggest goal lead increase for him comes from 15 to 20, so he has a relatively steady early game, but then he goes off, and he already got donated yeah. or outplayed. He definitely played that super well, by the way. Yeah. First blood. I mean, we continue to point out a whole bunch of times where the enemies of Samsung, the opponents, make mistakes around the mid lane, and he continually punishes them. But over and over again, I mean, we saw it against RNG as well. Xiao Hu, uh, you know, flashing forward onto Malzahar yep. to try and pick up a kill there. It always seems that Crown uh, does not make these mistakes and comes up with the extra kills. And no down here. bottom lane, though. Sneaky caught up. Exhaust goes down. Oh, he doesn't even. Yeah, it was the undertow that takes him down. I didn't think Ambition was going to get there in time. Meteos just on the edge. Shockwave in the mid lane. Petrifying oh. eight man. Jensen. He flashes the oh. ball. Oh. Jensen comes up with a clockwork wind up. And this is exactly the matchup that we were talking about. Oriana so strong, one v one. Despite the first one, Jensen still gets a kill. He failed the ulti cancel just by a hair. Tried to show his booty to Crown, but it was still enough, and he gets the flash again. Exactly, where Crown tried to flash the uh, ball the bottom there. Gank one more time. Exactly, they're gonna continue to be aggressive down here. Now, Smoothie had a really good headbutt there to break the tether, but didn't matter, because Ruler landed the snare. Yeah, but he broke the tether on the wrong tiger here. The zone from the ulti, every time Crown wants to walk back and go into his QE pattern, he is under threat of getting ulti by Oriana. Despite the fancy flash, it's just enough for Jensen to take him down. And that's exactly why they picked this matchup. Exactly. He's expecting Jensen to immediately go with the command attack, but Jensen holds it, waits for the flash, then is able to get him. Exactly. Staying in range for those autos as well to build up. And he gets the best of Crown in the mid lane. But we got to go back to the bot lane, though. This was a mistake from C9, overextending with no vision. Smoothie using the knockback on the support. Yes, it breaks the tether, but why not knock away the AD carry, knock up the support, put a trap on him, and then have at least counter pressure in lane. These are the, the rash decisions that's putting C9 behind. Also, you have to wonder, why would they engage all of a sudden? That's because the jungler could be there. But C9 lacking the defensive mindset. A little bit of aggression, you know, after Sneaky what got out of the tether, then going for the couple of autos. Yeah, there are a bunch of roads to try and travel down there. But let's get back to the game at hand because this is a very even game as far as the <laughs> gold is concerned right now. Just very different focuses for the two teams. Uh, in the mid lane is Cloud9's point of power right now. Jensen not only with the kill, but also has that CS lead uh, in the counter pick there. And bottom lane is where Samsung should continue to focus. And Medios has flash available. So there is a world where they just put the ball on Medios. He flashes in for a knockup with the tunnel. And Crown has, has a hard time walking is, up to the lane. Is that this world or is it a parallel universe, <laughs> Trepo? <laughs> it has been know. a while since we've seen a delivery system. There are two ways for it to happen here between Alistar and Rek'Sai. It may catch him off guard. We just saw Cuve use that ultimate to get back. Cause Impact to use his ultimate so he feels good after he takes the minion wave between the turrets. Give Impact a little kiss. Yeah, was able to deny Impact one melee minion there. But Impact still holds that CS lead. Uh, and as you said, very low jungler uh, proximity up by the top side. They've been left to their own devices quite a lot here as Meteos brute force invade. Jensen, <laughs> Jensen would need to push up that mid lane quicker uh, to try and come over. He kind of has control right now, but half-hearted invade. And they're doing it on the back of really good river vision, though. There's a lot of zone going on here. Look at the poke. Can keep going as well because they know Sneaky has to focus on the minions back to the Whoa. top lane. The haunting guys is finished. Other Leandries, I should say, by impact. Flash is forced, however, in the play. 
Ragnarok still would have canceled out the Shockwave, but Crown also backs off as Meteos is just off of knocking him up. The initial pressure from that fight is going to come from Meteos using uh, this red smite here. You get so much more 1v1 power, and Olaf would have to back off there anyways, but uh, not going to be able to capitalize once again. Oh, this uh -oh. could be it for Sneaky. If Smoothie can get in range, it's actually Sneaky's flash that is forced. Doesn't need to call the ultimate out of Smoothie, but Juve given Impact Hell on the top lane here. Could phase dive in, looks for the Scrap Shield to go down, and he gets the third hit. And Chrono breaks back to safety. Yeah, despite having an early CS deficit here, he's building super tanky here, fighting against the base damages from Impact as well. Impact going for a really big damage build, but he's left so squishy for so these couple stabs when he walked back to lane. I put him so low that he can actually get dull. Yeah, just a couple of smart moves there by Cuve. Each one stacks up. You know, get a little bit of chip damage here as he's coming back to lane, going for another trade under the turret. Now his ult is back available. He has the confidence to dive and impact nowhere to go. Also didn't have flash, so big, big outplay there from Cuve that took a long time in the making. Yeah, and honestly, this is C9 again playing, putting so much emphasis on that mm -hmm. bot lane and, and mid lane river in between that vision that they're procuring. But Meteos hasn't gone a top lane a single time, and with the Rumble Rexa, you could easily put some pressure on Cube here. Impact again, forced to play on an island, despite being the guy with the most solo kills in group stage. It's been a lot since Impact was playing much stronger in the top lane that Meteos almost stays away from that lane. Set up, why not let him walk into the trap? They're just gonna go after him immediately. It looks like he may stay for the fight, enough will die. The heal from Ruler, and that's gonna keep him alive. Sneaky goes down, and Samsung changes this one and puts it right on top of, a head, of its head. That's Cuvay's teleport down, but he just got a kill in the top lane, so he's got some time to breathe outside the lane. Once again, another setup from Cloud9 that backfires here as they're not able to burn through the karma through all of the shields. Even with the brush advantage with two versus one and ignite used. It looked like he would have walked on that trap anyways. Most yeah. people will go to ward it, but it's very dangerous to let people go for the full fish stick though. Sometimes when you're in combo range, you gotta be happy because the situation in scrims that doesn't fail so many times where they juke you or you make a mistake. Right. They um, figure out you're there first and collapse even faster. That's that's about C9 having to just know. When you make that play, you gotta be sure that you get the kill right here. Let's see. Yeah. Core JJ, does the ignite expire before the heal? Combo here is Sneaky in Exhaust Range. That's the biggest thing, yeah. That's the problem right there. Max Exhaust Range for Koji J. I think Kaelin can actually outrange in that situation. Then he dies. And as well, thinking to just Q backwards over his shoulder, add that much more damage in. Playing very solid from the bot lane, and things are going to get much harder for Cloud9 with two dragons down in favor of Samsung Galaxy, an ocean and a mountain. Yeah, Cloud9 are attempting to be proactive here, but this is the second time where they set up a play off of the Alistar, they get punished, and then it turns into a Drake as well. And Samsung now actually with a substantial lead in this game. Cloud9 kind of have to go for a Wombo Combo team fight now with uh, Rek'Sai Flash, Unburo, and Orianna Shockwave with the Rumble Ultimate on top of it. Yeah, this is the phase of the game from 15 to 20 minutes where there's such a stark contrast between these teams. Galaxy always ramps it up. Somehow gets an extra kill, an extra pick off because we're leaving the mold of the laning phase. And C9, they actually struggle. Their gold advantage dips on average um, after 15 minutes towards the 20 minute mark because they're just struggling to find the right play and execute it. And then the super small sample size we've seen when Samsung does have the lead, it's 100% once they get these in the mid to late game. Impact still able to deliver a little bit of damage here. But QV with that kill still makes him think twice about fully going into the fight. Sneaky now to the mid lane. And as you said, Kobe, Cloud9 is trying to be proactive. And now they're moving the pressure around. Yes, as their it, turret is down. It's They're in a very rough position because their first turret went down mm -hmm. without any sort of answer here from Cloud9. So they've lost so much territory on the map. It forces their AD carry and their mid lane AP carry to also fight for farm. And this is one of the, you know, most difficult things for teams as they strict, uh, struggle through the mid game. You kind of have to wait for Ruler to deliver all these minions up to a safe spot. Medios gets hit here. He should just be able to tunnel out of this one. Not much help. There we can see Jensen giving him. Already shielded him out and then moved the ball. But now they know they can keep going. Mid pressure is going to be theirs. And Cloud9 is getting suffocated in every lane. Sneaky goes down on the bot side. Yeah, it all started with pushing bot and top lane, but it was Jensen in the mid lane that could hold his own keep Crown back. But well, you do a couple of mistakes here. No. Crown is getting strong enough with the out of pressure from Ambition to really spearhead 
the mid lane pressure, and suddenly C9 find themselves pushed in in all three lanes. Exactly. No pressure left at all for Cloud9 in there. Going to have to go into defensive mode, use defensive vision at the moment, whereas Samsung can pick any point of power right now. Man, Ruler with the Jin hits oh. every single ultimate shot. Literally just killed him with the ultimate only. Yeah, really good use of the Cadence there. Sneaky did not get the 90 caliber net out of the bullets and got hit by every single one. And that prowess on the champion is why we rated the Jin pick so high between these two teams. Samsung really using it effectively. And Cloud9, the underdogs, trying to make a comeback. But again, it all stems back to the early game. Yep. It is Samsung Galaxy correctly capitalizing on some of the windows of opportunity left open by C9. If this is an even game, that doesn't work. But Samsung, so good at snowballing minor advantages. They're considered a very slow team, even in the LCK. They could always close games, but they didn't have the strong enough early game to really break it open. That's why they were struggling against top teams. They never beat the likes of Rox, SKT later on in the season. They only beat them in opening week. They had two games, I think, where they beat the Rox Tiger. After that, they only beat teams below them, but consistently so. Here we go, though. Cloud9 again. Flash in from Smoothie. Rulers the focus, which means he can get the Mantra Shield from Core JJ. They should both be able to walk out of this. And it's hard to choose a target in the bot lane with all the speed. Impact's going to go down to another solo kill from Cuve. And now it's the bot lane. Ambition thinking, should we go? Asking the team. It looks like they've turned the trigger on for this one. Cuve teleports to the bot lane. Jensen gets melted. Smoothie's going to be the next target in the eyes of Samsung Galaxy. And can they bring the universe down on Meteos' head? Yes, they can. 10 to 1, 20 minutes in, and an 8k gold lead to Samsung Galaxy. Juve has been having some fantastic teleports. Not only does he solo kill Impact in the top lane, he TPs down, shuts off the escape route after an initially fumbled play from C9. That trap should have been better. Yeah, I mean, Samsung right now are winning the entire map. There, there's really no openings. Cloud9 tried to make another proactive play, but uh, oh, it was as Impact was teleporting there as well. And Cuve comes up with the solo. Yeah, solo kill, Impact trying to join this fight. It all went wrong because that trap on the left side of your screen right there was supposed to combo. It was supposed to be Alistair combo yes. into the trap, but it was placed ever so slightly a bit too much to the right. So when Medios joined in for the knockup, they let the gym escape. Oh. Ruler got away, and then he had back-end damage in that fight, which means a complete ace whitewash for Galaxy. Looks pretty busy over at that Baron site. 21 and a half minutes in. It is going to be the ward. Smoothie may not be able to do much. Medios is just too far away. And Smoothie may go down on this one. Another hit comes in. Impact goes down. And I wonder what that this gonna does. The bot lane. To the mentality of C9. They made a couple of good setups, but they fumbled the execution. That led to vision loss, more pickoffs. And as they desperately tried to claw their way into the fight, they they ran into a, such a consistent Samsung Galaxy here, always punishing every single window of opportunity. Yeah, this is a very important opening game here for Samsung, as they've really been able to establish dominance all over the map. And Cloud9 really are going to have to reset after this game and not get too down about this one, because, man, just left, right, and center, Samsung picking up victories. And coming into this game, Cube and Impact had six solo kills apiece for top lane, yeah. the highest at Worlds, and Cube has just skyrocketed that record. That's the nature of the matchup. If you fall behind in the Echo Rumble matchup, he will hunt you down. Cube had a Magi Soul Stealer up to a couple of stacks. He sold it right now. Just stole him. <laughs> He had a couple of stacks <laughs> of that. He's like, nope, I die once, not worth it anymore. Selling it for Spirit of Visage. Just going for consistency here. No fooling around. Yeah. Samson Gallagher, he said it. Once they got the quarters, they need to get to semifinals. But what a great opening performance. Yeah, this is going to do wonders for the confidence of this team. E even turning around constant plays from Cloud9, uh, they probably won't be too scared. So you have to be care careful about, you know, getting overconfident, I guess, and moves forward. Here we go, though. Cloud9 still going for plays. Uh, they know that they're so far behind that it's going to take multiple people. So yeah. still trying to be proactive and get something back for themselves at the moment. But in order to take the game and turn this entire game around, it's going to be a long farm for late and uh, defensive play. Honestly, that is actually a great way to get some breathing room. Take that Baron away from Cuve so he can't be a pest in a side lane. But everybody <laughs> else still has Oh, Samsung. Crouching Tiger hitting they Sneaky. They can almost do what they want. Ruler. 
C9. They measure out on this one. Ambition's gonna be able to get another mountain. So when Samsung Galaxy reaches the turrets, they will not be long for this one. Yeah, C9's getting creative right now. <laughs> they know they're not winning a 5v5, so they're hiding their AD carry in brushes, holding something face checks. Looking for the silver line. Looking for the answer. If you're in a position like this as a team, you know you're likely lost this game, but it's sometimes okay to just play it out slow and reset your mentality because this is the best of five. It's a marathon, not a sprint. One of my favorite games uh, of World uh, 2014, I believe, was high on the Zed. Oh, after they were so far behind, just still, you know, going for these sneaky plays to try and you know get something back for themselves, even if it's a little bit too late. As Samsung Got move in, trying to take the inhibitors down in QB. Still on the 1v1 with impact. Almost getting worse and worse for that top lane. Bot inhibitor is going to go down. Cubay may be able to solo that one in the top himself. Smoothie giving the team a little bit of room to work with. A great shockwave. Samsung Galaxy going to have to think twice, but so will the rest of Cloud9. Oh. Jensen's almost out of mana. Can't dance this one out too much more. He hasn't really gotten any of his blue buffs this game. They are being, being denied resources and objectives all across the map. And this may be another very fast game from Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, super clean closing here. Jensen doing what he can, but it's not enough. Doesn't have enough ability power to supplement Shockwave combo here. First Nexus turret is falling. Looks like it could be number two. Exhaust to Meteos. Meteos is saying walk this way, but he can't even get out of the base for them to follow him. He's going to come up with about a quarter health here. Crown should be able to do the work with Ruler there on his last bullet. Reloading as they head to the Nexus turrets. Impact throws <laughs> down the Equalizer. Says you want to walk him. in. Here's the red carpet. And it looks like he's going to start cooking up some dinner. First one was Crown. Can he find any more? Ruler is down. Now Sneaky trying to get back to the base for Solace. But Cube ties his shoes together. Takes him down before he can get there. And it's only 25 minutes in. Everybody's falling left and right. It looks like Samsung Galaxy is going to have one more try at the Nexus. Yeah, they still have people oh, hitting still the Nexus at the, the moment. When you don't know when to leave the party, you keep staying. And you start to become the troublesome one. That's Cuvee right oh, now. Oh, it is oh, Ambition oh, that went oh. down. Cuvee, a few more swipes, just a few more HP as well. And they silence him. Just a few hundred HP short of a down Nexus. Cloud9 stand still. <laughs> 26 <laughs> minutes into this game. They're still going to put up the defense, though. Uh, like we said, defensive vision, I mean, you know where they're coming, though. Samsung are just going to go straight back to the Nexus. Oh, yeah. Rally caps on for everybody <laughs> in the audience. Sideways, inside and out. Tenacious looking, deaf in the eye. Not today. Well, maybe today, but just not like right now. Maybe five minutes from now. They're stalling out. As long as they can keep fighting, it's all about the mentality right now. It's about the mental reset into game two. And that is something C9 have done well in the past. You're no strangers to reverse sweeps. Yeah. It's a long combat. You got to keep believing. It's true. Uh, you can't let one opening game uh, affect the next one here. But man, yeah, Samsung going to walk right in, take down the inhibitor number three. And Samsung, we, we got to praise them for how they punish the mistakes, but we can go back and look at this game. What if the plays that C9 made actually worked? What if that flash combo with the flash knockoff worked? Right. What if that first guy connected? What if Jensen could start snowballing and could really start leaning into this Oriana versus Cassiopeia pick? This would be an entirely different game. Everything that Samsung is doing right now causes Cloud9 to instantly react. Semi alts flashing forward. Cloud9 has to act immediately. Looking for the kills as well as the Nexus. It's going to be Cube as well. Going for one more kill. They turn around. It's the last few hits. 27 27 for your first game of Samsung Galaxy. Taking out Cloud9. We were wondering what would happen when the team with the longest game times on average met Samsung Galaxy, who had the quickest wins across the board. Well, pretty fast win here for Samsung Galaxy. Very, very impressive from Samsung this game. Just across the board, stoic in every single lane. They turned around almost every single play that Cloud9 made. Some of them by mistakes of Cloud9, but then some of them by sheer outplays too. The presence of mind for Crown to know that not only could he escape the 3v1, he could get a turnaround continue. first blood kill without dying in the process. Honestly, incredibly impressive. And I have why uh, many pundits consider him such a good mechanical player. And as Cassiopeia, that's one of the best feelings. Being able to use that ability to counter with a petrifying gaze and then choose whatever target you want. Obviously,